Hey everyone, I'm Hashem and welcome back to another Pushing Film video. Today I want to share some tips for doing basic checks on a film camera. Now I'm about to head out traveling, maybe by the time you've seen this video I'm already traveling, but uh, at the time of making the video I was uh, going through and checking some of my cameras to make sure they were ready for this holiday just to do some preliminary things, just to check some of the cameras I was taking with me and thought it would be a good idea to share some of these tips with you. And doing this is to mitigate that risk of taking something along with you on a holiday, for example, especially if it's something that's been sitting on the shelf for a while only to find out while you're on your trip that it's not working. And doing these basic checks are not going to be a replacement for getting a professional inspection or service on a camera that needs it especially, but they are worth doing if you have the time and the inclination and uh, they're not only applicable to checking the camera before traveling, but also if you're about to purchase a camera and you are looking at it physically. So just keep that in mind before we proceed. All right, so the first thing I advise checking with the film camera is the shutter. Now, obviously you're gonna need a shutter to create an exposure and this is one of the easiest things to test first and foremost, just to make sure that it's still functioning and that the different speeds are functioning at least to some degree. Now, obviously without a dedicated shutter speed tester, you can't check to make sure that all your shutter speeds are going to be accurate, but you can at least do some basic checks just to make sure that your shutter is at least firing at the different speeds and there isn't some kind of malfunction whereby it's only firing at one speed, for example, or it's uh, even worse, not firing at all. So to do this, just uh, cycle through the different shutter speeds on the camera and just make sure they're working. I like to start at the slower speed. So for example, start with uh, one second. I'm gonna use the Leica at the moment as an example because it's empty and just cocking the shutter first while it's on one second, firing the shutter and just listening to it just so it kind of sounds like about one second. And then as I increase the speed to half a second, you'll obviously get a faster speed if it's working correctly. Sounds like half a second. Again, you can't be accurate, but you can get an idea that the camera is firing at different speeds. And another thing worth doing at this point is also taking off the lens or opening the back cover, just so you can have a look at that shutter as well, just to see that it's opening and closing and the transport is clear and everything's working as correct as you can ascertain just from looking at it. So slow speeds, higher speeds, just to make sure that it's fully opening and closing and then uh, continuing up to higher speeds just to make sure that the high speeds are working as well. And that looks good in this case. So I'm gonna put the lens back on and just touch on some of the variation you might find with uh, non range finder cameras. It should be pretty much the same with something like uh, an older SLR like this Nikon FE. You just wanna Turn it on if your camera has an on switch, obviously, and cycle through different shutter speeds just to make sure that they're working correctly. Again, looking through the lens or the back door if possible. And with this one, let's just open the back door just so I can have a look and just see that that shutter is opening and closing correctly. Sounds like about one second. And again, I'll just cycle through and check the different speeds. Now you might have something electronic like this EOS 3, in which case it's more or less the same but some cameras might not allow you to fire it without either a lens on or some kind of requirement like that. But just see if it does let you fire it with, with no film in the camera. But it's the same principle really, except you're controlling everything electronically. And again, see if it lets you fire with the door open. And that was 25th of a second. I'm gonna go down to one second and fire that off. One Mississippi, sounds about right. And I would just do the same thing just to make sure that the shutter seems to be working correctly and it's not hanging up on any particular speeds. All right, so the next category is checking your batteries if your camera requires them, if it's electronic like the two that I just mentioned. So if you were trying to test the shutter and you already ran into a snag whereby the shutter is not firing, perhaps the camera is sitting on the shelf for a while, especially if you're purchasing it and the person you're buying it from hasn't used it for ages, you might need to just put in some fresh batteries. So if you're looking at this from the perspective of traveling, you know your batteries are okay and they're working, uh, I would always advise taking some spare batteries, definitely, if you're going on a long trip especially, but also testing the batteries that are in your camera. They might be on the brink of dying and it might just cut out during your first roll on a trip. All right, so to do this, the easiest way would be if your camera happens to have a battery check operation built in. So with this FE, for example, has a little battery check switch here, which when I turn that lever down, 
little red light comes on. And there's a similar thing with the EOS 3, where if I open this door, there's a little battery check button and your camera might have something similar. Try and look it up online and see if it does. Alternatively, uh, you can open the battery and just visually inspect it. This is useful if you're gonna go buy spares. That way you can make sure you buy the right kind of spares. And with this FE, I'm just opening the bottom uh, battery door here with a coin, which might be similar for a lot of SLRs out there. And this way I can open up the battery compartment to gain access to the cell batteries that are inside the camera. That way I can make sure I've got the right model if I'm buying spares or just to make sure that they have an ideal amount of voltage still. So to do this, you will ideally need something along the lines of a multimeter. So you can completely skip this step if you don't have a multimeter or you don't have access to one. This is completely optional, but it's just in case you wanted to know how to test the batteries and what you're looking for, you can follow this step if you would like. Otherwise, again, just make sure that the batteries you have are working and that you have some spares if you're traveling. So to use the multimeter in this case, I'm gonna turn it on to 20 volts because these batteries, you'll see on the back of the cell that they're 1.5 volt batteries. So all you're gonna do in that case is touch the positive terminal to the positive side of the battery and the negative to the negative. And as I connect those, you'll see that they're showing up with 1.37 volts on the multimeter there. So because they're a 1.5 volt battery, they should be reading at least 1.5 volts. So in this case, this is telling me that these batteries are actually running towards the end of their lifespan. And there's a good chance that maybe a couple of rolls in, you never really know, depends on the type of battery. Um, they could die fairly soon or they might last quite a bit, yeah. But because they're showing below 1.5 volts, I would wanna make sure that either I've taken spares and I'm ready to change them as soon as they die, or I would just maybe chuck these out, put a fresh pair in and take a couple of extra spares beyond that. Now, after you've done those previous checks and you have a functional battery, this is a good time to test the meter if your camera has one. So in the case of the Leica MA, there's no meter, so I wouldn't be bothering with that. But in the case of the FE, once I replace those batteries, I would just look through and make sure that the meter is functioning correctly. So what I might do, for example, is point it at a bright source of light while looking at the meter and then pointing it somewhere darker, just to make sure that the meter needle is actually responding to me pointing it at those different sources of light. Now, Again, you won't be able to be 100% accurate with this, but the main thing we're looking for here is to make sure that the meter is at least functioning, that the electronics inside the viewfinder, if your camera has it, are still functioning. Now, the next thing worth testing on your camera before heading traveling or buying one is to check the lens and aperture that is connected to the camera. So the basic thing you wanna do here is check all the different apertures on the lens. So starting off with the Leica here, as I cycle through different apertures on the lens, you should be able to see that the aperture is opening up as I move to the wide open aperture click, which is 2.8 in this case, and that it's closing with each click of the aperture ring. So if you don't see it move as you're changing it, a lot of cameras will have stop down metering, such as with the Nikon FE and most popular SLRs. So as I'm changing the aperture on this camera lens, I'm not actually seeing it change as I'm changing the apertures. But what that means is I need to hold down the depth of field preview. So as I'm holding that down, now I can actually see the aperture changing as I'm clicking through the different stops. Alternatively, what you can also do is put on a really slow shutter speed, let's say again, one second or half a second. And then as I'm firing it with the aperture stopped down to, uh, you know, let's say F8 or F11, I should be able to look at the lens and see that the aperture is closing down as the shot is being taken, as the shutter is fired. So I can see that that worked in this case and I'll just do it again one more time for the camera. As I'm firing the shutter, you can see the aperture did close down as I fired that shutter. Similar method might work best for electronic cameras like this. Just fire the camera at slow shutter speeds and make sure the aperture's closing down. And that's just a basic check you can do for your lenses to make sure you're, they're working before heading on a holiday, for example, or buying a camera that came with a lens. Another thing worth doing if you are buying a camera for the first time, or even if you've had a camera or lens sitting on the shelf for a really long time, is just to put it under some light and ideally take it off the camera and just visually inspect it. If you have access to something like a torch, maybe shine some light through it. Just make sure you haven't had any buildup of fungus or haze happening over the years if it's been sitting there for a while, especially if you live in a humid environment. You can start to see the very beginning signs of uh, fungus forming on the front of lenses sometime. And it's just worth making sure you get onto it early if you can because that you'll have a better chance of cleaning it off if possible. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so that last point brings us to the next tip I have, which is just to do some basic cleaning on your camera. Especially if you did notice any grub or grime or really minor fungus starting to form on the front of the lens, this is the time to get some lens cleaner and just clean the front of the lens. What I recommend using is things like these lens pens, for example, or just simply a nice soft microfiber lens cloth and just cleaning the front of the lens. If you have some really bad grime build up, you can use some kind of specialized lens cleaner if you like. It might not be necessary, but just do some um, basic cleaning on the lens and all over the camera, just to make sure you don't have any debris that's built up and caught into any of the integral parts of the camera where the controls are. And the next thing I recommend doing with the basic cleaning of a camera is just to open it up and clean around the film chamber. So just looking at this EOS 3, for example, uh, you can see it's nice and clean. There's no broken bits of film or large pieces of dust or debris that have uh, built up inside the camera because that's the last thing you want getting caught in the film, especially if there's a grain of sand or dust or a piece of broken film, which can cause trouble later on. And that's where using something like a lens blower will come in handy, just and a soft brush across the areas of the film travel, just to make sure that everything inside the film chamber is clean before you put your camera to some heavy use, especially. Okay, so the final tip I have for some really basic checks on your film camera before traveling or purchasing one is just to check the film transport if you can. Now, generally this is going to require you to put a test roll into the camera. So by that, I mean a roll that is just a sacrificed roll, a roll that you've ideally just sacrificed for the purpose of testing cameras or a roll that's already been ruined in the past. And in this case, what I would be doing is putting it in the camera and just making sure that the film is advancing and traveling along inside the camera when it's loaded and also rewinding correctly. So if this camera had been sitting on the shelf for a while, I would just wanna make sure that it is still taking up film, loading it correctly and advancing with each shot. So I'm just gonna load it in there and then fire a bunch of shots just to make sure that it is being taken up. And again, because this is a sacrificed roll, I will just open it up and just look and make sure that it is being taken up on the take up spool inside the camera. And if you're doing this with one of the more common cameras like the Leica rangefinder we talked about or the SLR style camera like the FE, it works the same. Just load up the film, make sure it's traveling along correctly as you're advancing with each shot. And then just that it's uh, the rewind function on your camera is working correctly. So it's gonna load up this roll, make sure everything's working correctly. It's on one second, increase the speed fire off the shots. You can see that the rewind spool is advancing with each shot. I'm going to open it up again, dummy roll, wouldn't do this with a live roll and just make sure it's being taken up there correctly. And then just make sure that the rewind function is working. I'm going to hit the rewind release, rewind it just while holding that down, just to make sure that the rewind is working correctly. And that's that. Okay. That is it. Those are my tips for doing some basic checks on a film camera before heading out on a holiday or before buying one, if you have the chance to inspect it. Now, again, this is not a comprehensive test of all the functions. You can go a little bit further and check all the actual functions on a camera if you believe it has those extra functions. For example, this doesn't really have much to it except the shutter and aperture and the film transport. But with something like this, which is a little bit more complicated, you might have a built-in flash that's worth testing, a couple of different modes and settings that you wanna make sure are working. It's really up to you how far you wanna go with all that. So again, it's just some basic tests that are worth doing and it's better than not checking your camera the way I see it. So I hope some of this was helpful to you. And if you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Perhaps I or someone else reading them will have the answer. And yeah, again, I hope this helped. I appreciate all the support on the channel as usual. Check out some of my other videos if you're interested and I'll see you on the next one.